Hi, this is a good question to try if you're interested in revising transformations of graphs. So I'll give you a moment to read this and do try the questions and if you've got any problems just fast forward to the various parts where you'll find the work solutions. Okay, well let's see what we've got here. We've got figure one shows a sketch of the curve C with equation y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to x squared multiplied by all of 9 minus 2x. And there's a minimum point at the origin, as you can see here, and a maximum point at the point 327. And c cuts the x-axis at the point a. And in the first part, we've got to write down the coordinates then of point a. So writing it down would seem to suggest then that it's pretty obvious. Well it is, the answer for that point is x equals 9 over 2. And we know that because at the point A the y coordinate would be 0. And so it's when f of x equals 0. This factor x squared would equal 0 leading to x equals 0 or the other factor 9 minus 2x would have to equal 0. So it's essentially when 9 minus 2x equals 0 and if you add 2x to both sides you're going to get 2x equals 9 and then if you divide both sides by 2 you get that x equals 9 over 2. So write down the coordinates of the point A you should have been able to say then that A had coordinates 9 over 2 comma zero. All right. Now in part B we've got to do on separate diagrams we've got to sketch the curve with equation for part one y equals f of all of x plus three and in part two y equals f of three x and in each case we've got to indicate clearly the coordinates of the maximum point and any points where the curves cross or meet the coordinate axes. So for the first part of B, we would just draw our axis and we'll put that curve back on. Now what does a transformation of f of x plus 3 do to any graph? Well you can revise all these transformations anyway if you go on my website and look under transformations of graphs. And if you look up this one, what it does is it translates the graph that's a sliding movement. It slides it, translates it parallel to the x-axis by minus three units. Okay, we switch the sign here. Minus three units. So in other words, what's going to happen to this graph then is that, if I can just demonstrate, it's going to slide three units across to the left. Now do bear in mind that this point here, the maximum point at 327, is now going to be moved across to a maximum point on the y-axis. Why? Because the x-coordinate, remember that the maximum point here was 3, so if we move it across 3 units, that maximum point there is going to be at the point 0, 27. Okay. We've also got to say where it crosses the x-axis. Well, it crosses the x-axis. It should I should say it touches actually here. If it was at the origin originally, we move it across to the left three units. Then this point here has got to have coordinates minus three zero. And as for the point A, well, it had coordinates nine over two zero, and if we move that back by three units, bear in mind that this is four and a half, that's going to leave us with one and a half units. I'm going to write it as three over two though, three over two comma zero. Okay, so that answers part one there. Now in part two we've got to sketch the graph then of y equals f of three x. So if we set up our axes and we draw on the original graph, then 
what does a transformation of y equals f of 3x actually do to this graph? Well, it stretches it by a factor of a third parallel to the x-axis, with the y-axis staying invariant. What that basically means is it kind of squashes up this curve to the y-axis and any points on the curve stay put. So this point is going to stay put. So what we're actually doing is squashing this up to the y-axis. This point here is now a third the width across at the same height. So it's about there. Take for instance this width here. This point here is about here now. And as we work our way down, the curve gets closer and closer to the y-axis. And then at the origin here, this point stays invariant. And now, the same applies to a point like this. It's a third the way across. A point here, this width is a third now. It's reduced by uh, to a third. And so that's going to be there. But when we get to this maximum point, which was originally at 327, if we move that in by a third of that distance of 3, it's now going to peak with an x value at 1. And it's going to come down now. And at the point where a had coordinates 9 over 2, 0, we've now got to do a third of this. A third of 9 over 2 is 3 over 2. So this point A is going to be a distance 3 over 2 from the y-axis, one and a half units in other words. So we'll just say that that's, say, that point there. So that's the new point of A, and it has coordinates 3 over 2, 0. All we've got to do now is just draw that curve in. So if I can do that, we'll just draw it in here. It's going to come down through there down through the origin, back up. It's going to reach a maximum at this point and then come back down again, down through that point, 3 over 2, 0. And we need to write in that maximum point there. So it's going to be a third of 3, which is 1. So it's going to have coordinates here at 1, 27. We'll just put that in there, 1, 27. This point here is going to stay put at the origin. So that should be your new graph. Let's just take away the old graph. And therefore, that is your graph then of y equals f of 3x. Now finally, in part c, we're told that we have the curve with equation y equals f of x plus k, where k is a constant. And it has a maximum point at 310. And we've got to write down the value of k. Well, let's just say we do it on this graph here. Let's put that graph back. If it has a maximum point at 310, remember that this graph here had a maximum point at 327. And what this transformation does is it translates, shifts in other words, the graph up or down by k units. If it's plus k, it shifts it up by k units. If it's minus k, it shifts it downwards by k units. So if our new graph has a maximum point at 310, that's clearly vertically below 327 down here somewhere. So what have I got to do to this graph to translate it downwards to the point 310? Well, if we take that graph, let's just grab hold of it, and we pull it down by so many units till it's at 310, I've got to pull it down by 17 units. So therefore, for this graph to come down to 310, k must be minus 17. So write down the value of k, so k must be equal to minus 17. Okay, so 
hope that's given you an idea then how to go about the various parts to this question if they were giving you any problem.